What's up everybody, it's Izzy from Power Living to Win, and before I get into the topic of today's video, I want to do a quick recap on what we've talked about in the nutrition series thus far, because it has been such a long layoff since the last video. Now if you haven't seen the first two videos, I'll go ahead and put a link to the nutrition series in the description box for you, but basically what we covered is the whole point of powerlifting nutrition. And there are really two, ma two main primary aims of powerlifting nutrition. Number one is weight management, and number two is performance enhancement. So one of the things that we discussed is that a powerlifter is gonna be at an advantage when he weighs in in the maximum allowable weight for his weight class. And again, that's for the reasons that we just mentioned. If you're at the max weight for your weight class, you have a better chance of carrying more muscle, and the more you weigh, the more you can eat, so your performance is going to be enhanced by your nutrition. Now the other thing that we discussed is that in order to be competitive, you have to maximize the amount of muscle that you're carrying, which means, of course, minimizing your body fat to a certain degree. We discussed that there is an ideal range for powerlifting because it's a performance sport. If you go too low, it hurts your performance, and if you go too high, you're not going to be competitive versus the guys that you're lifting against. They're going to have more muscle than you. So what we established was that you have about a range for most people of 8 to 15% or so, which is going to be their ideal competitive body fat percentage. Now, as for the topic of this video, when should you move up a weight class? Well, if you take into combination all of the things that we just discussed, it would seem that the answer would be that you move up a weight class when you can no longer make weight in the weight class that you compete in while staying above your minimum competitive body fat threshold. And while this answer is close to correct, it is not quite 100% accurate because it leaves out one of the most prominent practices of elite powerlifters and that is cutting weight for a meet. Now, for those of you who don't know what cutting weight is, or maybe don't know the extent of what cutting weight is for elite powerlifters, cutting weight in part involves manipulating sodium, water, and carbohydrate intake to temporarily decrease your body weight for a short period of time in order to compete into a lighter weight class. It can also include tricks such as using laxatives or liquid diets to empty the gut, it can also include practices such as sweating out water via hot baths, steam rooms, saunas, and so forth. And at the higher levels, it can also include natural diuretics such as caffeine and dandelion root. And of course, some competitors go the full mile and they use prescription diuretics such as Lasix. Anyways, simply put, cutting weight in powerlifting is simply describing this combination of practices that powerlifters use to cut anywhere from 5 to 15% of their body weight for a very short amount of time just so that they can make weight for a lighter weight class. Now, of course, not all of these practices are safe or healthy, but they are nevertheless quite effective. In the case of Matt Kroc, he once cut over 35 pounds to go from 255 to make weight in the 220 weight class. Pretty crazy stuff. Now of course, I know the next question that you guys are going to ask is, how much weight should I cut? And really this depends on a variety of factors. If you are a younger athlete, a youth athlete, a teenager of any kind, I'm actually going to recommend that you don't cut weight at all. It's not necessarily healthy and there are there is some research out there to suggest that these drastic fluctuations in weight can inhibit your growth and sexual maturity. So I just can't recommend it to teenagers or anyone who's still going through puberty. Second, is this your first powerlifting meet? If it is, you know what I'm gonna say, don't cut weight unless it's you know a handful of pounds, like two, three, something along those lines. And the reason for this is because if it's your first meet, it's already going to be an overwhelming experience in terms of trying to figure out when you should warm up, when you need to put out, uh, go out there for your next attempt, giving the judges the correct information, figuring everything out, the lights on you, the crowd, all of that stuff. It can be overwhelming, and I don't think you need to be worrying about managing your weight at the same time. Wait for like your third or fourth meet to start doing this. Maybe your second meet if you're one of those people who gets competitive really quickly. Now, the last consideration, and perhaps most important consideration, for those of you out there who are not either young or beginners, or both, is how long is your weigh-in time? You see, if you have a 24-hour weigh-in, you can do a lot more drastic weight cut than if you have a 2-hour weigh-in. 
I'm gonna save my actual weight cutting protocol for the next video, but let's first discuss what's realistic in terms of an overview for both a 24 hour weight cut and a two hour weight cut. So starting with a 24 hour weight cut, it's actually quite realistic and relatively easy uh, to cut about 10% of your body weight. This can be done, again, relatively easily and relatively safely and healthfully. But um, there are power lifters out there who using the more extreme methods, including prescription drugs and whatnot, that cut up to 15% body weight or so for a 24 hour weight. I'm not gonna recommend that practice. I'm not gonna help teach anybody to do it. And you're gonna thank me for that because if you're gonna try a weight cut that big, you really should have professional guidance because any number of things that could go wrong at any time that could require medical attention. And you just don't wanna be doing anything like that on your own, especially if you're just learning about it from a YouTube video. As much as I think I'm putting out good information, you really need something a lot more in depth than a YouTube video if you're gonna go for something that extreme. That said, 10% can be done relatively easily and you can pretty much handle it yourself. Now, as I hinted at previously, if you have a two hour weigh-in, such as is the case in the IPF, you cannot cut anywhere near as much weight. In fact, cutting 10% for a two hour weigh-in is absolutely silly, it's foolish, you should not try it. There are primarily two reasons why that's the case. The first big one is simply hydration level. When you have 24 hours to rehydrate, you can sweat out a whole lot more water, you can get a whole lot more dehydrated and still have enough time to drink enough fluids, to eat enough food to reconstitute and get those hydration levels back up to par. With two hours, there's only so much that you can do. There's only so much that your body can process in terms of water to get your high hydration levels back up there. So you simply can't dehydrate as much for a two hour wave. Now the second reason has to do with glycogen storage and glycogen replenishment. And this is a very complex topic, physiologically speaking, so I'm gonna really break it down to the basics. In an oversimplification, whenever you eat carbs, the body stores them as glycogen. And in order to store glycogen, you need about three to four grams of water per gram of glycogen that is stored. So what in effect this means is that for most athletes who carry about anywhere from 8 to 10 grams of glycogen per pound of lean body mass, you might have anywhere from 1 to 2 kilos of glycogen in your system at any time. That's 1,000 to 2,000 grams. And if you're carrying 3 to 4 grams of water per gram of, per gram of glycogen, well you can easily see how you might be carrying anywhere from say 4 kilos to 10 kilos of glycogen or glycogen related water weight. So with a full 24 hours, what you can essentially do is cut out carbohydrates from your diet and deplete your glycogen stores very significantly. And this is going to give you anywhere from, like I said, 10 to 20 pounds of additional weight. Now here's the problem with doing glycogen manipulation on a two hour weigh-in you only can replenish or what's called resynthesize so much glycogen in a given time frame. Depending on the size of the athlete, the exact number is gonna be anywhere from 50 to 150 grams every two hours. Eating additional carbs beyond that is not going to enhance the speed of the glycogen resynthesis. So if you only have two hours for your weigh-in, you realistically are not going to want to deplete any, any more than say, on 100 to 500 grams of glycogen or so because you don't necessarily need full glycogen storage to have a good performance. But the bottom line is, is that in a two hour weigh-in, you simply don't have room for much glycogen manipulation. Whereas on a 24 hour weigh-in, if you're eating every two hours, you can easily replenish anywhere from 90 to 100% of your glycogen stores in a 24 hour period, as long as you're eating those 50 to 150 carbs every two hours. And just because of those two reasons, hydration and glycogen uh, replenishment, if you're on a two hour weigh in, you can't afford to do all these drastic things and you simply can't cut as much weight. So obviously the next question then becomes, how much weight can you cut for a two hour weigh in? And well, the thing is, is you could cut the same amount of weight, but you're not gonna be able to get the water back on, you're not gonna be able to get the glycogen back in there, and so your performance is going to tank. Now, what you can do, in my experience and my opinion, because you're limited 
to water loading, sodium manipulation, and um, pretty much methods that empty the gut, such as laxatives and whatnot, you can really cut a, about at most 5% weight. Keep in mind these are rough guidelines, like 10%, 5%, those are not absolutes, they're rough guidelines. And to be honest, 5% is pushing it for a two hour weigh-in. I personally recommend that you try to keep within about three kilos or so of your competitive body weight because that is about the amount that you can do easily with water loading, which I'll discuss in the next video. It's very simple, it doesn't require a lot of effort, it doesn't require a lot of suffering, and you'll be able to make weight doing it. That said, my rough estimate for the maximum that you should consider for a two hour weigh in, just because of the things that you can't do, is about 5%. All right, so let's answer the ultimate question, the question in the video title, and that is when should you move up a weight class? Now, let's just consider everything in combination. The answer of when to move up a weight class is when you can no longer use a combination of dieting and cutting weight to make the weight class that you intend to make. So if you have to go below your minimum competitive body fat threshold, and or you simply just can't cut enough weight to make it anymore, you should move up a weight class. Now I'm not a believer in artificially holding your weight down, so in the off season I do recommend that you stick to the practice of bulking between, 10, between 8 to 15 percent or so and cutting down. If you notice that you are outside of that 5 percent or 10 percent weight cutting boundary, say a month or two out, that's when you're going to want to go ahead and engage in a mini diet. Now, a lot of you are going to freak out and say you're going to, you're dieting going into a meet, but it's actually just a mini diet. It's only you know four or five or six weeks, which isn't going to produce the same negative panel of hormonal effects as say you know, like a full out 16 week body moving prep or something like that. And ultimately, if there's no other way for you to make weight, it doesn't matter if it's hurting your performance a little bit because there's no other way for you to make weight. So you have to do that. Again, though, after you've been training for a few years, you're going to settle into a weight class that makes more sense for you long term. You're not really going to be able to do traditional bulks anymore because there becomes a point for a natural where gaining you know, two to three pounds of muscle a year is a blessing. And when you're at that point, it doesn't make sense to say spend three months gaining you know, 10 to 12 pounds on a true bulk. It just doesn't work anymore. So once you get to that point after about three to five years of training, instead of bulking in a body fat range, you're really going to bulk and cut in a weight range. And that's going to depend on you know, what your weigh-in is. So if you're on a two hour weigh-in, you'll bulk and cut within 5% of your competitive weight class. And if you're on a 24 hour weigh-in, you'll probably bulk and cut within 10% of your competitive weight class. But ultimately, you are going to move up a weight class when you can no longer make weight via dieting and water cutting. And that's really the simple answer to this question. I hope it helped. And in the next video, we're going to discuss how you actually cut water weight for a meat. If you found this content interesting, informative, or entertaining, you know what to do. Please like, comment, share, subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out powerliftingtowin.com for more great powerlifting information. Have a nice day.